Hi, Bethel family. It is so good to be with you again today. Today in Holy Week is Wednesday. There are no recorded events whatsoever on Wednesday with Jesus. The one thing we do know is that on Wednesday, he spent the entire day in Bethany. In fact, he spent the night in Bethany. And that's about all we know about Wednesday. It's called Silent Wednesday. Now, tomorrow is Passover. We're going to have a great time discussing Passover. Right now, I just want to give a special shout out to our youth, 70 times 7. And Pastor Ryan, he has been meeting with our youth every day at noon on Zoom to walk through the Word of God. And I'm so proud of them because they've been so faithful in doing so. I've got some great news, too. A little surprise. This coming Sunday, we're going to have a sunrise service right here in the church parking lot, and we're going to take communion together as a family. I purchased these little self-contained communion cups. They're all natural. Just had one, had to sample it. The juice is fresh, and the crackers aren't stale. So I'm really looking forward to this sunrise service this Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Now I'll be getting with you a little bit later on this week to discuss the time and when we'll be meeting. Friend, I want to give you a word of encouragement right now. God knows what you're walking in. Like I've said several times before, this has not caught God off guard. In fact, just the other day I was out mowing the grass and I was just thinking about Tanya and I's journey when I was in the school of ministry and starting out in the ministry not knowing what we were going to do or where we were going to go or, in fact, how things were going to work out. All I knew was that God had called us and we were being faithful to the voice and to the word of God. And friends, sometimes that's all you need to do is just be faithful to the voice and to the word of God. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will provide for you. You know, Tanya and I literally saw all kinds of provision take place in our life. So this season for us is not a time of panic and run around saying, what do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We do what we do every day. We spend time with Jesus. We spend time in his word. It's like the disciples. When, when the man was lame at the gate, beautiful, what were they doing? They were doing what they did every day. They went to the temple and they were doing what they did every day. This particular day, though, they had been filled with the Holy Spirit and they had the eyesight of Jesus when they walked up to that man. So I want to challenge you. What is Jesus trying to work in you right now? Are you giving him that time that he needs? I also want to encourage you, spend time with your family, reading the Bible. I always recommend a chapter of Psalms, a chapter of Proverbs. Start in Matthew, read a chapter of Matthew. When you get done with Matthew, go to Luke and so on and so forth. But when you get done with Psalms and Proverbs, start over and constantly reread them. Something that I've seen here lately that's been really encouraging is families out together again. I see families walking down to the down to the towpath along the Maumee Bridge to, to walk along the river. In fact, just today when I was driving through there, I saw several families just out and about. You know, I have a feeling one positive that's going to come out of this entire season is there's going to be a tighter family bond. And I believe that is, I believe that is, a, I believe that is a, a, a God thing. I believe that that is ordained by God. You know, our lifestyles get so busy and so hectic and we're go, 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 go. And now all of a sudden, because of these quarantines, we're stuck at the house. Take advantage of that time. Build those strong relationships. Let's come out on the other side of this thing stronger and, and biblically wiser in the word of God. Let's utilize this time to get to know our Heavenly Father just a little bit better. Friend, I got to tell you, uh, there's been a lot that's gone on. And I'm excited. And if you need some prayer, I want to pray for you. But first, I want to read a blessing out of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Now, kids are taught in kids' church to put their hands up like this to receive. So I want you to put your hands up like this and receive this blessing, if you will. This is Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 19. And it says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, 
that he would grant you according the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the faithfulness of God. Bethel, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now for everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would put a hedge of protection around them, that you would keep them safe, Lord, that you would keep them from this virus. And God, I just thank you for your provision that's coming into their homes even now, Lord. Father, as they learn to trust you, Lord, Father, I pray that you would take us deeper into your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, it's been great to be with you. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you back tomorrow as we talk about the Passover.